Hey, and welcome to the first of hopefully many tutorials for uh, Downpour Virtual Execution. The digital short I made just had a lot of visual effects, and you can find it on my channel. And today I'm going to go through this little scene right here. This one. Not that. That. So the initial shot is this, right? So this is what we shot. Oh, I love the audio playback. It's just me running through these storage containers. We've got a big light right here. We'll go over the actual setup and everything we use. We've got a big light here. We've got our two storage containers out behind our warehouse. These are real. Anytime you can use practical, use practical. Don't, don't rely on CG. I'm a CG artist by trade, and I know that if you can do it for real, do it for real. And uh, the ground, we wanted real ground because ground is always hard to do. So we've got this big green screen back here held up on two C-stands that's clamped to it. This is kind of the, the pop-up kind with the hard edges. I really like those because they're smooth. They're a solid color. They don't change. They don't get wrinkly, really. They're really nice, but it wasn't big enough. So we had to wrap this green cloth we had, this backup old, old green screen we had. You can tell they're kind of different, and the lighting is not smooth on this. It's smooth here. It's a nice solid green all the way through here. It's all wrinkly. You can see the shadows and highlights and different things, and that's going to be an issue later. But especially when you're mixing greens and you are going to get stuff like this when you have specular, basically, like highlights on your storage containers that are going to show the green. So be mindful of that and, and try to fix that and watch out for that if you're doing anything near your glass or windows or anything when you're trying to use green screen don't do it because it's going to key that out too so but this 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 will be okay it'll end up all right we'll see there's ways around it but we'll we'll talk about that so the original shot i run in i'm all wet because i took a bucket of water dumped it on my head dumped it on my jacket because we wanted it to be raining we want it to be nighttime we want it to be raining and we shot it at about three o'clock in the afternoon and the end result is you know this Pretty cool, pretty different. So the first thing, we're just gonna go through and break it down each thing one by one and just turn these off just so you can see what's going on. So this first layer is the chromatic aberration which is from Magic Bullet Looks Universe which I'll link to in the description. It's amazing, a lot of people have made this really cool stuff. I use it all the time because I love like 80s retro style stuff and they have some great effects for that. There's a lot of presets and things and holograms and things like that. But what this, this does is I really like, it kind of takes the colors and just kind of bleeds them a little bit, like the blue and the green. If you look real close right here, you'll kind of see some blue here and some green here, I mean red, sorry. And without it, it's fine. It looks, it doesn't look that different. It's adding a little blur around the edge, it's kind of a blurry, zoomy vignette, which kind of look, gives it like, um, looking through a, I don't know, an eyeball more than a lens, because you don't kind of really focus on everything at once. I don't know, it just kind of helps you focus. Anytime you can bring your viewpoint in, you just kind of, it's just stylized really is, is all it is. I thought it looked cool and sometimes that's enough, you know. You don't overdo it. Some people may see that as too much. But, you know, like I was talking about here with the, these little green slivers that were, they might key out with the reflection of the green. You know, you, you blur that and you don't see it anymore. So, problem solved. <laughs> A little bit at least. So, I always remember that. If you can fix it in there and make it stylized, maybe it'll work. But I love that. So that's that's that one. This was also one of my favorite things to use. Andrew Kramer's Video Copilot Optical Flares. I'll link to that. If you haven't seen him and his tutorials, check it out. Everything I know basically comes from him and trial and error. So he's just a fantastic teacher and he provides awesome products. So this is a, a lens flare and they're not really that expensive. So I put it in up here. Our real light is actually right off screen up here. And I just was like, well, I wish, wish you could get that clean lens flare from it. But if we actually brought it into the frame, you would see the barn doors and everything on it. It doesn't look as cool. So we'll bring in this fake lens flare, put it in there in post. Right, okay. Then break that down. We've got this one, which is my day to night, basically. So this is kind of what it looked like without this on. So we've got a curves effect here, which you can use a lot. So what I did is I, I brought it down a lot darker. Okay, so it's, everything's darker in general. 
And then I brought the blues down. So I wanted all my shadows to be bluish rather than a reddish, sorry. A little reddish and green, a little less blue. Because, uh, I don't know, green just really works with it. It's kind of a matrixy vibe, but, but not really. It, it, everything piled up on top of each other works better. Because you, you can have it darker if you know you're going to put in an optical flare on top of it, and that's going to brighten everything back up again. So if you have everything bright, then you put in a flare, and it's too bright. And then you're like, well, I want to see my flare. So darken everything else, bring it back up, it'll bounce out. So it's it's all up to you. It's a personal choice, which is fine. I love lens flares, so I like to see them, but I don't like to have so much lens flare that I don't even know what I'm looking at. I don't want to look like I'm just staring into a flashlight. So I was happy with these colors. Curves, man, you always, there's no like set rules. Just fiddle around with it till you like it. So it's like, oh, okay, okay, mm, no, and that's, literally it it's just gonna take time and just play around with it and have fun with it you go oh. and then you always at some point just go crazy and just pull it up just to see what even happens if you just went wild with it and brought it to the corners and you're just like whoa but <laughs> so we can always undo okay so that's kind of what we did there and then after that we brought in this exposure which brought it back down again right so it looks pretty dark like if I looked at it right here it looks like nighttime which is kind of what I was going for so before the exposure control with the exposure control so you can see it's just kind of darker and, and purplier and just sort of this maroonish purpley green like it just looks kind of night 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 like so I was happy with that so you take that off and then you're left with you got this a gradient ramp which I used purple and teal and I just used those because it's that 80s style I like it's always dark purples and pinks and teals and blues and greens and they all just kind of this neon color about them and they work well together like dark black is never black black is like dark purple in 80s retro cyberpunk stuff and so I just wanted to create that so it's teal up here by my light, right? So it's, and it's fading this way into purple down this back corner further away. So I wanted to kind of complement the light falling off, but I didn't want it to be white and then dark. I wanted it to be teal and purple. So you can see if I blend all the way, that's what it looked like before. And if I go all the way down, it's almost too much. It's too purple. This just doesn't look right anymore and this is blown out too much so that's why I had it here play with the blend and set to about 45 right so it's right in the middle so you still this isn't that bad looking this isn't blown out completely and it just kind of looks kind of natural kind of stylized and set that to overlay it's an adjustment layer so this is what it is normal so it's kind of pale teal and, and purple but when you set that to overlay on it it's just gonna blend in better. And it's better than screen, screen's always gonna make it brighter. Overlay is always gonna kinda make it a little darker. So that, that gives you that, that look that kinda looks good, I think. 